Hello scholars, today we'll be discussing science tools. Our objective for the day is that you'll be able to identify which measurement tools to use for specific science exploration. To begin, we'll discuss tools that are used for safety. Remember, being safe is our number one priority when we are working in a lab. The first type of protective equipment that you'll learn about are safety goggles. Safety goggles are a type of protective eyewear that keep any harmful substances out of our eyes. They form a barrier that keep the bad stuff out and the good stuff in. Gloves, like goggles, are also protective for our hands. They form a barrier to keep any harmful chemicals or substances off of our hands and on the gloves. They keep the bad stuff out and the good stuff in. Now that you know these two tools, why might it be important to use safety tools like goggles and gloves? Please tell me in 30 seconds, starting now. 25, 15, 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Nice job. Did you say that it's important to use safety tools like goggles and gloves so that we can stay as safe as we can, as we can during, before, and even after the lab? Nice job, that's a great answer. Next we'll discuss tools that are used to measure length and distance. To begin, we'll use, or we'll discuss a tool that you've probably already used, a ruler. A ruler is a straight edge tool in a hole and fractional units that's used to measure length. Rulers usually, usually measure smaller objects, like this seed. They usually use millimeters and centimeters to measure smaller objects. If you wish to measure a larger object, you might use something called a meter stick. A meter stick is a much larger version of a ruler. It is a tool that is used to measure linear distance and is usually used when you measure meters and kilometers. Based on the image, I want you to go ahead and take the next 10 seconds to tell me what this tool is called and what it measures in length. Ready and go. 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, and one. Nice job. Did you say that this tool is called a meter stick and it measures length in centimeters, meters, or kilometers? Any of those answers are correct. Nice job. Let's keep going. Next, we'll discuss tools that are used to measure time. Time can be measured using a stopwatch, like the one you see in the picture. A stopwatch is a tool that is used to measure small increments of lapse time. So for example, if I would like to see how long it takes for me to heat up a bag of popcorn, I could use a stopwatch and it would tell me exactly how long it would take to make that bag of popcorn. We measure time using a stopwatch using the following units. We can measure using seconds, minutes, or even hours. Like a stopwatch, a clock also measures time. However, this tool can only help us tell time and not measure small increments of time. It can, however, tell us time using seconds, minutes, and hours. Like we previously did, take the next 10 seconds to answer the following questions. Ready and go. 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Nice job. Did you say that this tool is called a stopwatch and it measures time in seconds, minutes, and hours? Awesome job. That's completely correct. 
Next, we'll discuss different tools used to measure mass. A unit of mass is a measure dependent upon the quantity of matter. The more matter there is, the larger the mass. I want you to point on the screen which of these masses would probably have the smallest amount of matter or the smallest amount of mass. All right, in three, two, one. You're right, this would probably have the smallest amount of mass and the smallest amount of matter. Nice job. We'd probably say that this could be weighed in milligrams. A milligram is the smallest amount of mass. It is also followed by grams, which is much larger, and kilograms, which is even larger. If we were to measure, let's say, a paper clip, we might say that a paper clip weighs one gram because it doesn't weigh very much. If we wanted to weigh, let's say, an elephant, we could say that we'd weigh it in kilograms because kilograms are the largest way to measure mass. How do we find a mass? Well, we use a tool called a balance. A balance is a tool for weighing and measuring mass. It can be measured in kilograms, grams, and milligrams. I want you to think to yourself, if you wanted to weigh a piece of popcorn, what unit would you use? Would you use kilograms, grams, or milligrams? Tell me in three, two, one. You're right, probably milligrams because a, a piece of popcorn doesn't weigh very much. Next, we have a tool called a triple beam balance. A triple beam balance is a different tool for measuring and weighing mass. It's called the triple beam balance because it has three beams, a beam for milligrams, a beam for grams, and a beam for measuring kilograms. If I wanted to measure, let's say, a bowling ball, what kind of unit on the triple beam balance do you think I would probably use? Would I use milligrams, which are the smallest, grams, or kilograms, a bowling ball? Tell me, please, in three, two, one. You're right, I'd probably use kilograms because kilograms can weigh very heavy things. Moving on, next we have a different tool that can also measure mass and it can also measure force. This is called a spring scale. You might have seen some of these at the grocery store when your mom or your dad or your grandma, whoever is your guardian, um, when they're weighing fruit, right, at the grocery set, at the grocery store, and it tells us exactly how much mass something can have. Now, like before, I want you to look at this picture and answer the two questions. Ready in 10. Five, in three, two, one. Nice job. You're right. This tool is called a triple beam balance. And you're also right. It measures mass in milligrams, kilograms, or just grams. Next, we'll discuss tools that are used to measure volume. Volume is the amount of liquid in an object. We can find this using, using a graduated cylinder. A graduated cylinder, if you don't know, is off to the side of the screen. I remember that it's called a graduated cylinder because if you were to flip it all the way over, it looks like it's wearing a graduate graduation hat, doesn't it? It kind of does. Now, when we measure the volume of liquids, we can measure it using three different units. It can use milliliters, centiliters, or liters. Now, the smallest unit is the milliliter, the second smallest is a centiliter, and the largest is a liter. If, for example, we wanted to measure how much water is in a swimming pool, we'd probably use liters. However, if I wanted to see how much water was in a spoonful of water, I'd probably use the milliliters. Okay, just to give you an idea of how these work. 
Next, we also have a beaker. A beaker is a tool used to measure and pour liquids. If you look off to the side, you can see how it's marked off in ML, which stands for milliliters. Like a graduated cylinder, it can also measure the volume of liquids. I want you to again look at this picture and answer the questions in 10, in 5, 3, 2, 1. Awesome. These tools are called a graduated cylinder and it measures volume in either milliliters, liters, or kiloliters. All right, nice job, let's keep going. Next, we're gonna talk about tools that you use to observe. When we observe, we are watching or we're looking at something. A tool that you might use to observe is a microscope. You might be familiar because microscopes are any tool that is made of sets of lenses that make very small objects appear large for study. It can be very important because our human eyes cannot see everything. For example, we wouldn't know that germs and viruses exist if we didn't have very powerful microscopes. Because with our naked eye, we cannot see that. However, if we use a microscope, that allows us to see those tiny, tiny objects much, much bigger. An object that is similar to a microscope but less powerful is a hand lens. A lens that increases the apparent size of an object. You might use this if maybe you're examining an insect or if you're trying to read the text on a book that is very small. While it does make large objects, I'm sorry, small objects appear larger, it can only do so much. It's less powerful than a microscope, however, it is still very useful. Another object that we can use to observe is a mirror. Now mirrors are smooth surfaces that reflect light and you may be very familiar with these. Now, based on what we just discussed, what is the importance of a microscope? Why might a scientist need to use a microscope? Go ahead and tell me in 30. 25, 20, 15, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Nice job. Did you say that a microscope is important because it makes small objects appear much larger? You're right. This can be very helpful when scientists are trying to make new discoveries. Next, we'll, find, we'll talk about tools that are used to record data. When we record data, we make note of it and we store it for later so that we can compare it to our findings. The first tool we'll discuss is a calculator. A calculator is a tool that helps us perform mathematical operations. When working with science, you will be using math and calculators help facilitate and speed up that process. Next will be computers. Now computers are tools that help compile, select, and organize data when we collect it in our labs. Cameras can also help us capture photographic images to later reference when we are working on a lab. And finally is a notebook. Now a notebook is going to be a tool for recording, thinking, and making observations during investigations. Many scientists keep notebooks to keep a record of what their findings are. Think about why it might be important for a scientist to keep recordings of their investigations. To reference, right? If we discover something, we wanna write it down so that we don't forget it and we can share it with others. Now, Based on what we just learned, what is the importance of keeping a science notebook? Go ahead and tell me in 30, 25, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 
twenty, fifteen, ten, five, four, three, two, one. Nice job. Did you say that keeping a science notebook can help you keep a record of your findings? And if you forget something, you won't because it's written down in your notebook? You're right, that's exactly why a notebook could be very important during a science investigation. Next, we'll talk about some miscellaneous tools that you'll probably use during labs. The first is a magnet. Like you might know, a magnet is a piece of metal that attracts iron. Some metals are not magnetic and they are not attracted to a magnet. This can help us identify what type of metals an object is made of. A thermometer is also a tool that we'll use in science. You might be familiar with it because it is a tool used to measure temperature. In science, we measure temperature using degrees Celsius. I want you, based on your information of a, or based on what you know about a thermometer, I want you to name a scenario in which you may need to use a thermometer. Go ahead and think about that in 30. 25. 20. 15, 10, 5, 3, 2, 1. Nice job. A scenario in which you may need to use a thermometer could be a scenario when you need to melt an object or a scenario when you might need to boil water. A thermometer can help us find how hot or how cold something is. A terrarium is another object that you might see in the lab. A terrarium is a glass container in which you keep a garden of small plants and animals. The prefix terra in terrarium actually means earth. So it's a small enclosed habitat of the earth. Like a terrarium, we also have an aquarium. An aquarium is a glass container used to keep aquatic plants and animals. The prefix aqua means water. So what you'll find is different fish, different sea plants, and all sorts types of organisms that might live in the water inside an aquarium. Another object that you might see is a prism. A prism is any object that refracts or bends light. Some prisms that occur naturally are a drop of water, and triangular pieces of glass also act as prisms because they bend light into different colors. In fact, that's why we have rainbows every time after it rains, because the droplets of water refract all of that light. Next, we also have a compass. A compass is a tool used for finding directions. There's four directions, starting with no north, south, east, and west. Compasses can be used in times where you may be lost or you may need to find the direction of something. I want you to name a scenario in which you may need a compass. Go ahead and tell me in 30. 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Nice job. A timer you might need to use a compass is any time you need to find the direction of something. A compass can help you find that. Another miscellaneous tool that you may see in the lab is called a hot plate. Hot plates are a tool used to heat matter. 
It's very similar to that of a stove. Now, to end our lesson, we'll be naming that tool. So on the count of three, I want you to name the tool that you see on the screen. Ready and go. One, two, three. Let's see if you were right. Nice job, of course, they're safety goggles. Next one, ready? One, two, three. Let's see if you were right. You're right, it is a triple beam balance. Next one, ready? One, two, three. Awesome job, you're right, it is a graduated cylinder. And the last one, Ready, one, two, three. Awesome job, it is a thermometer. That is all I have for today's lesson, everyone. I hope you had a great time and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.